Okay, so in today's Retro Art Setup Guide, we are checking out a very awesome arcade system known as Cave. And Cave is powered by Main. So in this setup guide, we're going to be showing you which Main core to download for your best performance for your Cave collection. And we're also going to be showing you how to set up video settings, how to get the best image possible, as well as looking at some save and load functions where we can save our games and play back later from where we finished our game. So I'm going to generally give you everything in this setup guide, including how to import your games into RetroArch yourself. So check this one out. Okay, before I start today's cave and retro watch setup guide, just make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like if you like what you see today. It helps my channel out a great deal, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I release it, which is almost every day. In fact, I'm gonna say every day, and this is actually my third video I've uploaded today. So what we're gonna do first is I'm using RetroWatch Portable, and if you're unsure how to download and get up and running with RetroWatch Portable, check my RetroWatch playlist and that will show you there. Uh, so anyways, regardless if you've installed RetroWatch or you're using a portable like I'm using here, what we're gonna do first is go into your main folder, and for simplicity, just create a new folder here, and I'm gonna call this folder ROMs. And inside of the ROMs folder, I'm going to create another folder and call this folder Cave. And I suggest you pop your games inside of this folder just here, like I'm about to do. Now what we're going to do whilst they're copying into the ROMs Cave folder is that we're actually going to open up RetroArch. So of course your retro arch is near the bottom just here and it's the retro arch.exe to execute. Well if you double left click on this one. Now I've gone direct into full screen mode. If you're still using window mode, I suggest you do what I'm about to do. So to change this from windows to full screen, simply go to settings, video, full screen modes. If this one's turned off, turn it on and it'll refresh itself and reboot back into RetroArch. So what we're gonna do first of all, as the games are copying into that directory that we created, is actually download a core. So a core is a core, so a miniature little emulator that works side by side with RetroArch. And to download the cores, it's gonna be under main menu. We're gonna go to load core, download a core, and the core we're gonna use, which is gonna power cave games, is actually arcade main this one just here so you might find that this particular core itself won't support a hundred percent but it does support a good portion of the games i have tested on it so we're going to download arcade main and as we can see that's now downloading the core we're about to get a hashtag which tells us that that core is now installed now the next thing i'm going to suggest do is actually importing your cave games so once you're inside a retro watch it's just a simple case of going down to a folder that it's going to create and then you can easily access your cave games. Uh, I set this one up the other day for a previous setup guide as you can see. So to import, what we're going to do is obviously go to import content and we're going to go to manual scan, content directory and my cave games are on my C drive. They're actually in a folder on my desktop in my Retrobat folder. So once we're in C drive and providing you've got your games on your desktop as well, I'm gonna to go to users and then name of my computer is Jamie and my desktop is just here. Obviously, if you've got your game stored in documents or downloads folder, then just match it or link it up with that destination. But for me, I'm gonna to go to desktop and my RetroArch folder is just here and I just created a ROMs folder inside of my RetroArch folder. And here's my cave folder. So what I'm gonna do is scan this directory. And if I press up or page up on my keyboard, I'm gonna to go to start scan, press enter. And if I come out, we can now see at the bottom just here, we got cave up here. So we got main and cave, but like I say, main was a totally different setup guide I did. But we're looking at Cave, and here we are, and here are some of the games. So I'm gonna open up one of these. So if we enter that, 
what I'm gonna suggest doing, this is entirely up to you, is to set core association. So every time we open up a game within RetroWatch, you get this annoying little prompt which asks you which core to select rather than booting into the game. So if we set core association, and in this instance, I'm gonna select Arcade Main Core, which I've just downloaded. Core set Arcade Main. And what we're gonna do next is just go up to Run. And if I press my Google Stadia, I'm using the Google Stadia controller, which I converted a little while back as a regular controller. I'm gonna press that button with Y simultaneously, and that's gonna bring us into quick menu. So what I've done is just close the content and that's brought us back. Now let me just remind you that every setting you make within RetroWatch, RetroWatch can be very forgetful. So it's important to go to configuration file and save current configuration. So I'm gonna just save current configuration. If I come out of here, and what I'm also gonna recommend doing is if we go to online updater, we can update installed cores. So if you've got many different cores on RetroWatch and you've not updated them, then there's gonna be developments and bug fixes. So it's worth doing that. So I'm gonna just check out a different game and we're gonna look at some video settings after this. So we're gonna run this. And as we know, I set the core association to run with this main core that I downloaded. So as we can see, we got more of a full screen just now. This looks like a 4x3 ratio. So let's start up the game. Okay, so by accessing quick menu again, holding down my Google Stadia button, pressing Y together, what we're gonna do first is very quickly look at video settings. So if we come out of here and I go to settings, if I just go down to where it says video, from here, I always recommend going to scaling. I think the best options for video settings are in scaling. So we're talking about aspect ratio and you're gonna find under core provided, that's always gonna be put on default when you download a core. So we can change this and we can change it to say 16 by nine. And you can see in the background, the image has changed, but it's also gonna stretch it. So if we go back into the game, you'll see what I mean. So some of you might like that slightly stretch. Myself, I think it looks a little bit too stretched. So what we're gonna do is go back into scaling again. And I'm actually gonna put this one back onto core provided. And we can go to integer scale at the top. And what this does is just slightly squashes the full size image as it were. And it kind of condenses the pixelation and it kind of mushes it into a bit of a blur. So let's just check this out. So as you can see, it even looks more vibrant that things are pushed together slightly and it just seems a bit more contrasty, if that makes sense. So if we go to settings again in video, uh, scaling, so we can turn this on or off, but personally, I think if you want a really good experience and almost modernize these old retro games, put this to on and by far it looks a lot better. To me it does anyway. We also got integer scale over scale. Uh, and if we turn that on, your image is gonna be enlarged. So we need to turn integer scale off. So check this one out.
So again, as you can see, it's still taking away pixelation. It's giving it a slight blur. But like I also say, if you're going to use integer scale over scale, just make sure integer scale is turned off. Otherwise, you're not quite getting a full image there. Uh, so other settings we got here is bilinear filtering. And again, it adds a slight blur to the image to soften hard pixel edges. So if we turn this on, you'll find that RetroArch very quickly shuts down and boots back up. And there we go. So if we go back into the game, And there we go. And whilst we got bilinear filtering on, it's actually worth going back to aspect ratio in trying out four again. Now that it's not so pixelated, let's test this. As you can see, it's definitely not as pixelated as it originally was when it was put onto full screen or stretched. But yeah, I'll leave that up to you to decide. But for now, I'm going to actually put aspect ratio to the core provided. I just think that works best. And the next thing I would suggest, as we know, main games will contain thousands, potentially thousands of different games. If there's games you actually like, you can actually add this into the RetroArch favorites list. If you just go to quick menu and scroll down, you've got add to favorites just here. And if we back out under favorites, we can now see the game just here, which I'm currently playing. And here we go. And I'm always going to say this in my RetroArch setup, guys, but we also got save and load state functions. So, for example, if I go to save states just here, we got state slot at the top. And this has got a thousand different slots to save our games in. So this one's going to be starting off with slot zero. If I go to save state... And then if I go to load state, pretty cool stuff. And whilst we're here, if we go to core options, manage core options, we can save our video settings per game or as a whole for all of the games that we're using this core for. So, for example, if we go to save game options, these video settings are only going to apply for this current game that we're playing. If we go to save content directory options, it's going to apply to every game using that core. So select wisely, I'm going to just go to save game options. And of course, we got reset options as well if you just want to refresh everything to how it was. And if we just scroll down a bit further under quit menu, menu we got controls. Uh, if you're having issues playing games with your controller that you've got, then port one controls, device type, it's normally set to retro pads, but on the off chance this doesn't work, just use the keys on your keyboard, page up and page down, to access device type, and you'll likely see another option, and that'll work fine with your controller. And if you want to map out your controllers, under port one controls, we can also map out controllers. So that's it for today's Retro Arch in Cave and Main setup guide. Like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see today, make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss any upcoming Retro Arch content and other front end emulation systems that I cover on my channel. Also check me out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. But until next time, stay retro.